Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivy podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I am really excited that you're here with us today. Every week on the Happy Hour, I invite a girlfriend to join me on the show, and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. I want to say thank you to one of our sponsors today, Milk and Honey Teas. Milk and Honey Teas was started in 2012 in an effort to create t-shirts that are simple yet stylish. All of Milk and Honey's t-shirts start out with top quality products from ethical producers. They then add their uniquely simple designs and the result is a quality tea that is unique, stylish, and amazingly comfortable. You will love their full range of t-shirts, tanks, and sweatshirts that help you show off your personal style. Milk and Honey is a small business with a heart for giving back. 15% of profits each month go to an organization helping people in need. This January, you can also receive 15% off your purchase at milkandhoneyteas.etsy.com with the code HAPPYHOUR. Also, follow them on Instagram. Their Instagram account is at milkandhoneyteas to keep up with all the new product sales and specials. Um, and Milk and Honey is special to me this month. Not only is Milk and Honey Teas giving the Happy Hour listeners 15% off with the code Happy Hour, but they also are giving back to an organization that's really true and dear to my heart here right in Austin called Redeem Ministries. And so 15% of the profits this month of January are going to that organization. So Milk and Honey, thank you for sponsoring this happy hour and thank you for giving back. Guys, today you're listening to episode number 72 and my guest is Rachel Hollis. Rachel Hollis is the founder of the popular lifestyle blog, The Chic Site, and Los Angeles-based event planning firm, Chic Events. Rachel and I chatted about so many things, it was seriously like a real happy hour with the girlfriend you were just meeting for the first time. She explained her website to me, plus the journey she went on to publish her first book series. She's a big fan of women working and being creative, plus realizing that we don't have to have it all together. Can I get an like amen on that one right there? Her and her husband are just beginning the foster to adopt journey, and so we chat about what that looks like in L.A. County. If you want to send Rachel and I a message about anything from the show, we'd love to hear from you. If you want to send us a message on Twitter while you're listening, my Twitter is at Jamie underscore Ivy, and Rachel is at Miss Rachel Hollis. And last thing, guys, something really exciting. I think I have dropped a hint about this in episode number 70 that I talked with my husband about. Real quick before we get to this episode, this is my announcement that I wanted to give you. I'm planning a live happy hour. That's right. Mark your calendars because on March 6th, we're putting on a live show right here in Austin, Texas. I wanted to mention it before this episode because Rachel's actually going to be one of my guests. I actually really did literally fall in love with her on the show and everything she's doing and just a big fan of what she's got going on. And she's coming to Austin. And so I said, let's do this. I'm going to have two more women join me, my friend Jessica Honiger and my friend Jen Hatmaker. Both of them are two former guests from the happy hour. They're both Austinites, so that's easy. And they're both two of my real life friends that I do regular happy hours with. So mark your calendars, guys. March 6th with Rachel, Jessica, and Jen and I. We're going to have a happy hour. We're going to record it. We're going to let you listen. We're going to also let you come and hang out with us and buy tickets and be a part of the happy hour. It's going to be a really fun event that I'm really excited about putting on for you. So we've got a ton of awesome stuff planned to make an incredible night. So put it on your planner, mark it on your calendar, basically whatever you have to do to make sure that you don't miss out on this live show. Tickets are going to go on sale February 1st, and I'll be telling you more about it before then. Okay, here's my conversation with Rachel. Hi. Hello. This is like meeting a friend that you've been wanting to meet for a while. I think that's so true. I love that about social media because I have so many girls that I really truly think that I'm dear friends with that I (laughs) have never met in real life or talked to exactly when you tell people it's not as odd anymore but when you used to be like I'm meeting a friend for coffee we met over the internet people are like you're gonna be murdered exactly they're gonna make a suit out of your skin it's really weird it's not weird at all (laughs) oh my gosh welcome to the happy hour Thanks. Thanks for having me. The happy hour podcast is always fun because it's like you're at a happy hour, but you're not because it's like two in the afternoon, you know, and you're drinking tea in your office. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just chugging the water, but you know what? Happy hour is not just about what you're drinking. It's about what you're having and you're having a happy hour. Yes, I am. Okay, Rachel, this is really, really fun. And I'll tell you that I've been super excited to chat with you um, because I see you online and I love everything you do. Oh, man, that is so sweet of you to say. Thanks. First, you're like the cutest thing I've ever seen. (laughs) And that's a huge compliment because I just feel like I'm like, oh, my gosh, she seems so fun. I I mean, I think that if we hung out in real life, you wouldn't be disappointed. And that's another thing about the Internet. Let's talk about this. You can be friends with someone online and never actually talk to them. 
Yes. And then totally. when you get to meet them, they're not the same. Yes. Or they're way better. Or, okay, like, yeah, there's that yeah, too. It can go either way. Mm -hmm. um, no, for sure. There's people, be, I mean, like, because you don't know how long someone's taking to craft their thoughtful words on exactly. an Instagram post. Mm -hmm. So you get to them in person and you're like, oh, all right, that, someone else wrote that for you. Right. Um, <laughs> I always clearly. feel like this. I feel like people that listen to the show, they're like, oh my gosh, I love you. You sound like you're so much fun. This is awesome. And then I, I'm always thinking to myself, if you talk to my real friends, they would tell you I'm just really just a just like regular. I'm not like crazy. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just you know what I mean. Like well, of course, because you have to be on when you do something exactly. like this. It's just yeah. like a higher energy level. And if you meet me in real life, like I hope I'm wearing a bra. It'll be, a, <laughs> exactly. it'll be yeah. important. Um, I do. I am having a little bit of. I'm tripping out a little bit because I I am thinking that I'm listening to your podcast right now. So you're talking, and I'm just like, uh huh. Yeah, and but, then I need to remember that I have to but respond. But it's actually you. You're on the show. I know. It's confusing me because I'm usually like driving to a hair appointment and listening to the happy hour. So this Hilarious. is this is fun. Well, welcome. People will say to me, they'll be like, I feel like I know you. Is that weird? And I'm like, it's not because it's – I'm sure people say this to you as well. I'm like, oh, it's my job and this is what yeah. I do. So I'm totally. glad you know me. Totally. You know? Yeah, 100%. And I think um, my hope is always like if you meet me in real life that there's no disconnect. You're like, yep. The person that you're putting out into the world is exactly who you are. Yeah. You're very, you know, I, I try and be authentic and real. So hopefully that what you see is what you get. I hope that's true. Yeah. Speaking of putting on a bra, can I tell you about a funny story that happened to me this morning? <laughs> um, For sure. And the reason I said speaking of putting on a bra is because I actually had a bra on. Thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> because... So we're at a new school. We started a new school and I literally have on my post it ask her how the new school oh, is. Oh, yay. Okay. Instagram post where you're packing lunches. How did the kids do? Okay, so first day I'll tell you my funny story after so first day of school went great. I Good. was so nervous. I mean yeah. I'm just like a, a mom. And, yeah. and one of my girlfriends told me, she's like, I think you're projecting of your own past experience onto 100%, them. percent Because I kept asking Caden, my sixth grade, I'm like, Are you nervous? Are you nervous? And he was like, No. And I'm like thinking to myself, why not? Like, yeah. this yeah. is a Don't nervous you know thing. what's coming? Yeah. yeah. So they all did great. Like, we got – I picked up the little kids. Well, I call them little, second and fourth grade. And my son Amos is like, I have a best friend named Joe. And I was like, Aww. awesome. I yeah. love Joe already. Yep. Um, and then my son – I mean, long story, I ran into someone in the new town that we live, and we had gone to a Pineco family camp like three years ago. Okay. And she remembered me, and she said, I have a sixth grade son. Well, I didn't think anything of it. Well, Caden comes home, and he tells me that this boy – found him and said Aww. that his mom had shown him a picture of him the night before and he invited Aww. him to lunch. I, I could have cried. Come on. That's so good. Like, I literally want to find his mom and send her like flowers. Seriously. And hug her and give her a kiss because that's a good mom. It just made me like, oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's Mason's awesome. mom, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> if you're listening. Um, okay, so today, Rachel. Yes, bro. Um, do your kids ride the bus? No. Okay. So at our old school, our kids didn't ride the bus either. There was no bus. And so I would drive them to school most days, four out of five days, in my pajamas. Like, For sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, not yeah. getting out of the car. Like, yeah. No bra, pajamas, you know, mm -hmm. which is like lounge pants and a t-shirt, you know, so yeah. no big deal. It's not like my, like, lingerie yeah. for my wedding yes. night or anything. Yep. But You've anyway. got your negligee on. Yeah, so today yeah. my kids are riding the bus, but it comes to our neighborhood at 630. But if you just drive three minutes across the street, it's seven. And 30 minutes in the morning is a big deal. Yes. So I'm driving them across the street, across the little, not freeway, but big road, whatever, to wait for the bus. First time, it's dark. I am seeing where the other cars are waiting. So I kind of turn around. I'm going to park on the grass. Only when I go to park on the grass, it's not the grass, but it's a ditch. Oh, no. So my front right tire is like hanging off. No. Yes. I mean, it felt like we were in the movies hanging over a bridge about to die. <laughs> oh, no. And I made my kids get out the other side. Like, it yeah. felt like that. Yeah. But in reality, it really wasn't, you know. But it was two bit. strangers had to lift my car and push while I went into reverse. No. My poor kids are standing there probably thinking, we have the worst mom in the world because it's our first, first day, day on the school? bus. No. First day on the bus and my mom drives into a ditch. No. Oh, no. But the whole point was I'm glad I had a bra on. You know, yes. like I was dressed. Could have been one of those times. It could have been. Yeah. Yep. Luckily. So there's that. Sad. That's my bra story. But thanks for asking like, me. My kids are doing great. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. And how – you have you have three kids. Tell me how they're ages. Three kids. 
Uh, Jackson will be nine in a few weeks. Uh, Sawyer is seven and Ford is three. Okay. So you still have small children. I mean, three is small. I do. Yeah. He's three and he is, uh, I mean, I just almost said the most ridiculous thing. He is every inch the three-year-old um, and the baby, like so cute uh -huh. and gets away with everything. And I know that I'm not going to have another you know, Maybe, one of yeah. him. So mm -hmm. he gets like, you know, came in in the middle of the night and got in bed with me. And my husband was like, are you kidding, Rachel? Like just <laughs> found us like in bed snuggled together in the morning. I just, like, I, I, can't stop. Oh, I know he's so cuddly. Um, yeah. So I have three boys that are a lot of energy and work um, and a full-time job and kids yeah. here at work trying to take care of all of those. So there's a lot of mama yeah. bear going on. A lot of mama bear. Have you always worked full-time? Uh, yeah. For sure. Um, I got, I think I got my first job when I was 15 and I have you, you, you look like the person that loves to like work. Absolutely. My I friend, love. um, Jessica Honiger, uh, she's been on the show before. She's like that. She's a businesswoman. She yes. loves to work. Oh yeah. I have a full on girl crush on her. I ah. would like to make that like, let's have coffee and talk about all of our, um, entrepreneurial you things. You love her. I'm telling I'm you. I'm sure. Um, I, I just think that it's such a, um, it's really hard, A, to find other women in business, particularly entrepreneurs, who will be open about mm -hmm. the struggles. I think there's this like, hey, let's all pretend we've got it totally together. Yeah. And I don't know how you can have exactly. children and try and have a successful marriage and run a company all at the same time and not have something falling through the cracks. And so I'm just forever desperate to find this tribe of women who can speak to that. Um, I'm still on the search. Well, she she would be in that tribe because she shows me a lot about like in the importance of work and how yeah. she um, can do both. And who was yeah. I talking to the other day? Oh, it was my conversation with Sarah Bessie, and she's like, "I'm not mm -hmm. sure you can do both like the best in the be in that moment mm -hmm. at the same time. You kind of gotta." figure yeah. it out. And I'm sure you've had to figure that out. For sure. I mean, I think that, um, it, like the big question I always get, I think most women who are like working moms get when they go on a panel or something is always like, tell us about work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And I think that work-life balance is a myth. Um, I don't think there's any such thing as balance. I think that it constantly swings back and forth. And there are times where your family, um, because of different things that are going on is taking more attention and time and energy. And then there are times where work is taking more time and energy. And that's just what it looks like and sort of setting women up for everything's supposed to be balanced or men I guess um, is detrimental because you're never going to hit that yeah um, there's a really really good book um, out right now or it's been out for a few months called um, it's like the year of yes by Shonda Rhimes who's the I've creator seen like, this yes oh, so good and yeah. so funny and mm -hmm. easy to read so even if you're not a big reader you'll love it um, but she talks about that a lot like any time that you see me doing something awesome in my career that means that I'm giving up in another like I've had to give up time with my daughters I've mm -hmm. had to give up time at home like it's not ever going to be balanced it's just the payoff of getting to do things like this that's and I think that's good for women to realize mm -hmm. because we have this idea that it should be balanced and that it can be yes and then there's we're a disappointed lot of shoulds for women right yeah, there's a lot and then of we're so disappointed Yes, and we feel like we're failing somehow because we think that other women have figured it out and we haven't, and yeah. that's not true. Yeah. It's just absolutely not true. You we know, I experienced that this fall a little bit. My work just probably started within the past year and a half. All my kids are at school and I'm able to do more. But anyhow, this fall I was busier than I had been, and I did not go on one field trip with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel guilty for a small second, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, like, I just can't in the season, and that yep. has to be okay. Yep, totally. And it's okay for my kids to see that as well, because one of my kids was really bummed. He's like, Mom, yeah. I haven't been on any field trips this year. And I've always yep. been able to do that. Yeah. And I just couldn't. Yeah. And I just had to say, I just, it's a busy work time for mom. Yep, totally. But I then mean, I make I think... other, like, I'm home when they get off the bus. You know what I mean? Exactly. So there's like exactly. these sacrifices things. Yes. And I think that you have to choose that way. And um, I, it would probably be easier if there weren't other people throwing in their opinions on how we should be raising our kids or shouldn't be raising our mm -hmm. kids. Um, my kids are healthy and happy and well-adjusted and I'm raising them to be good men, I hope. They love the Lord. Like these are the things that are important to me. If I don't get to go to every field trip, that's okay because mm -hmm. um, that's just how I choose to parent my sons yeah. and you – and everybody else, we all just do it our own way. And we just have to get to a place where this is okay. Yeah. That we stop judging other people for how they're doing 
it. I, I think that it makes us feel better. Like if I can call you out for doing something wrong, I think we do this in our faith a lot. Mm. Like if I had, if I'm practicing exactly this way, then I've got it all figured out and I'm right. And if you go outside of what I think is what we should be doing, then I can call you out on that because it makes me somehow better. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. It just tears us all down. I'm, I'll, I promise I will not get on the soapbox. Go, girl. I, I'm time. loving it. I'm sitting here just taking it in. <laughs> Sorry. It's so true. We do it in motherhood and work life and faith. Yes. You're right. And I think women are I'm like, I love women. And I think we're the hardest on each other. Yeah, I agree. And we could end the show right now. And right. But let's just drop the mic. We drop the mic, <laughs> but we won't. Guys, I'd like to thank another sponsor real quick before we get back to the conversation with Rachel, Prep Dish. And I've heard from so many of you guys already that you're trying this out and you're loving it. I want to thank Prep Dish for sponsoring the happy hour because I love what they're doing. Prep Dish is a healthy subscription-based meal planning service. And I'll tell you, I've tried out to do some meal planning before, and it's hard to find meal planning plus healthy. I don't know why, but Prep Dish has got it going on with this. Every week as a member on Prep Dish, you're going to receive an email and it contains a grocery list plus instructions for preparing your meals ahead of time. So you're going to pick a day of the week, Sunday morning, Saturday afternoon, Tuesday at three. I don't know. Just pick some time of day. You're going to spend about two to three hours prepping all of your meals. And then for the rest of the week, your meals are ready. Guys, this is such an answer to the like, what do we eat for dinner tonight moment that I have almost every day around 3.30. Uh, Prep Dish does it for you. Prep Dish is that answer to what's for dinner. The chef, Allison is her name, super sweet, and she's offering listeners a special rate of $4 for the first month. So guys, that's a dollar for a weekly meal plan. Go to prepdish.com slash happy hour. The deal is good for a $4 trial, so it's a dollar a meal plan. Prepdish.com slash happy hour. You're going to love it, I promise. After you love it, let me know. Thank you, Prep Dish, for sponsoring this episode of the happy hour. Okay, Rachel, I yes, want ma'am. you to explain to me and everyone's listening everything you do. Oh, because well, I had a hard time figuring out everything you have your hands in. Yes. And so, like, what's your 30-second elevator pitch of what you do? Um, so I run a lifestyle media company is how I would sort of like, that's all encompassing. That's everything. Um, years ago I was an event planner here in Los Angeles and I started a blog so long ago because that's what everyone was doing. Like, Hey, have a blog Mm -hmm. and you'll market your company. And it slowly started to get some traction and started to get a following. And I realized that it could be a business. And so I made the switch, stopped doing events and started, um, the chic site as Mm -hmm. it is now. Um, started working on it about three and a half years ago and it just celebrated its second birthday of being online. Wow. Uh, that, it so, looks older than that. It looks yeah, like you, have, and, and what so. I mean by that, when I say that it looks no, like you have it yeah. figured out, which I know that you Man. don't, but no, we work so hard on it. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. It looks that. like, like you, like this is a thing. Legit, you've been doing forever. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It looks <laughs> legit. I was going to say that, but I didn't want you to think oh, that. <laughs> oh my gosh. You can't offend me, please. Um, it, no, it looks it's amazing. Totally legit. Um, it's um, so I originally I I when I decided to like rebrand the site, hire a designer, get people to help me run it. Um, I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted it to be, and my intention was I wanted to create a space online that made women feel better about themselves. I think there's so much in media that makes us feel like crap, quite honestly. And I wanted to create a space that was helpful and uplifting and kind and encouraging. I just wrote down all these words. And I think if I had been into fashion, then I'd probably have a website about fashion. Or if I had been into design, it would have been about that. I happen to be into like melted cheese. And so that's what my website's around. Um, I love recipes. I'm a big home cook. I love like a casserole and a slow cooker. I'm not fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to serve you sort of down home fair and it caught on. And amongst those recipes, um, I would write posts about postpartum depression or um, struggles in my marriage or um, having Bill's palsy, stress, anxiety, just anything that was really happening in my life. And we built this following of women who We're like, hey, me too. This Mm -hmm. is totally happening in my life as well. Um, So my intention with the company was I realized that if we could create this kind of online media for women that spoke to those words, happy, encouraging, kind, helpful, that we could do that in other areas. Um, So I I have 
books. I've written a series of books that are just light and fun and what you read when you're laying by a pool. Um, and they're fiction, uh, right? They're fiction, yeah. So um, the very first book is called Party Girl, and it's about my experience um, moving from a small town to Los Angeles and starting to do celebrity events. Um, I'm a huge, massive book nerd. I will probably tell you 27 books you should oh, read in the course of the conversation. Um, so I had always wanted to write, and um, that was the first thing that came out of me. And I, there were two other girls in that book, and fans asked for their stories. So um, the third and final book in the series comes out on January 26th, actually. Oh. And I never, ever thought that it would be a series, um, but thank the Lord, uh, it, it resonated with some people. So you just started um, writing yeah. fiction. That's not easy. No. And I think like a lot of writers, I had started and stopped possibly 25 manuscripts before I finished. Well, that my sounds first like what happens when people are writing yeah, fiction books. Just start, and I think there is like people ask how, 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 and I'm like, just finish one, mm. just actually finish one. Because that was, that was the thing that stopped me for so long was I just never finished. And, um, that first book is a really cool story. Actually, if, uh, I, I wrote it and I <laughs> so naive and I thought, well, this is, let's just wait for the money to roll in. <laughs> going to be a Pulitzer. And it's not. It's like not even close. Um, but I had a lit agent at the time and she sent it out to all the publishers in New York and everybody came back. And this was right around the time. I didn't think we'd go here on this podcast. But oh, it let's right, go. Yeah. It was right around the time that Fifty Shades of Grey had uh -huh. hit and was really popular. And um, I don't write books like that. Like no, not judging anybody, but it's not my jam. And so all the publishers in New York had come back and said, gosh, this is really cute could you make it sexier? Oh. And I, I felt like an after school special. Like I was like, uh, I don't um, no, you know, it was based on my story and I just, it wasn't something I wanted to do. And they said, thank you so much. But without that, nobody is going to buy this book. It's too sweet. Mm. And I was devastated yeah. when the last, yeah, when the last publisher said no, I, you know, tell a story of like going in my bathroom and sobbing. Like, like the kids are knocking on the door like, mommy, I'm like, go find your father. Like, I was, and then I got up. Well, I mean, it's basically someone saying, well, good for you, but we don't like yeah. it. Yeah. And it was a, it, it was a, it was a lifelong dream too. Yeah. I had to write a book. And I thought for sure if, if I just finish one, then then for sure someone will buy it. And I got up off the floor and Googled how do you self-publish a book and so ended up self-publishing it myself. And in six months, the sales were so great that I got a call from a publisher who bought the rest of the series. And were you like, booyah, like... Well, I mean, it was really validating. Yeah. I, but I tell that story to a lot of people. I mean, Party Girl has sold just under 100,000 copies. That's amazing. And, is it, right? And I'm not saying that because, oh, I'm fancy. I'm saying that because if I had listened to people, like real people who knew what they were doing, publishers in New York, mm -hmm. I they would still be on my computer. And you'd still be so, crying in your bathroom. Yeah. My, yeah. Favorite, my favorite saying is nobody gets to tell you how big your dreams can be. So, like, if you can't go through the door, find a window, find another way. Um, don't let anybody tell you no. Mm, I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> Please do. Turn it Nobody into Nobody gets to tell you how big your dreams are. Yeah. yeah. Please tell me you put that on a sign somewhere and you're selling that. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a, that's a, that's a quote. That's a, that's a big time quote. Um, okay, so that was the first one. And then you stayed at the same publishing house for the next two. Yes, yeah, so they bought the rest of the series, um, and each book is about a different girl in a different career, okay. because I really wanted to write about. I, originally, I thought that these books would be for girls who were in college, and it's just you know every sort of age woman has read them. But mm -hmm. um, the first girl is a party planner, the second girl is becoming a pastry chef, and the third is becoming a designer. And I wanted to write about like these careers that seem really cool and fun and awesome, but they're actually super hard, and you have to hustle to yeah. to get ahead. Okay, so you have your three books, and I'm just going to confess real quick. I've been calling your website the Chick Site. That's okay. A lot of people do. It is the Chic Site. So I apologize ahead of time. No problem. Nope, totally fine. I'm the used chic to it. Chic Site. Yes, ma'am. I bet you do hear that a lot, though. Yeah, especially when I started, because my events company, like 12 years ago, was called Chic Events, and okay. I would have people all the time call and say, like, is this Chick Events? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. What can I do for you? Chic Events. Yes. Um, so what was the craziest thing that ever happened in party planning? Oh, girl. Um, so many. And a lot of them are actually in the books. I wrote about a lot of real experiences. Um, the one that always pops into my head is just like the most horrific was 
bride bought her dress and a lot of brides do this. I don't know why smaller. Cause she just knew she was going to oh, lose. Yep. Here we go. And she didn't and bless her heart. Like they go to put her in the dress and the entire seam no. rips down the back. No. And so we had to find a seamstress who could come out to the church. She's hysterically crying. Like we're trying to like clean her up, get the makeup back on. Like, they had to sew her into the dress to walk down the aisle. It was, it was horrible. It was the most traumatic because she was so upset and you just want, you don't want that for someone in this no. moment. Yeah. But ended up being, it ended up being fine. So note to self, buy a note dress that self. fits. Buy your size. Yeah. yeah. Like, like worst case scenario, the seamstress can take it in. Don't, yeah. don't do that. My goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. I always say that my daughter could be a party planner because she just, she loves to party and she loves to tell me what to do. Yep. There you go. So I see it in her. Yep. It's a, it's such a fun job. I had so much fun with that. Um, okay. And I'm really happy to be where I am now, but it was, it was a great job for a long time. That's amazing. Okay. So you trans, uh, transferred into like just running your website. So you have a team <laughs> and this is what yes. you guys do. Um, but tell me about your Monday videos. Oh, Rach Talk. <laughs> Rach Talk for the yes. win. Yes. Yes. So like when we, did this ha how did this happen? Because honestly, I was looking through your bio and you've basically been in like every publication and TV show. I'm like, <laughs> you sound this job sounds amazing. Like I, I want to do Rach talk every day. Yeah, like seriously. Well, it's um it's so funny that um I mean we should like we should just sit down and have dinner and talk through this whole thing. But um the idea, like, I have a video guy who works here, and he's great, and we produce all sorts of videos. It's, you know, we do food videos and style videos and different things because we know that our readers really dig it. Um, and we we could tell that they really responded to any time, um, any time where they felt like they were sort of getting a more personal connection with For me. For sure, uh huh. Um, and so I noticed that all of these. I sound like an old woman, like all the kids on YouTube um, were doing these videos that had no production value. They just sort of turn on a camera and speak to camera. Yeah. And That's like, basically what this podcast is. Yes, right? Yeah. Should yeah. So I was like, record. Well, shoot. I mean, why? There's something interesting about that because you feel a deeper connection. Mm -hmm. So what's our version of that? And so I just told Jack one day, like, hey, let's make a video where I sit in the craft room and I don't know what I'm going to talk about and I'll just go. And it's become the most popular thing that we do every week, which is hilarious. And so and you literally like, just start talking. You don't, you don't have an agenda. Well, now I have a little bit of a better idea. Uh -huh. um, so the train's going by my office. Sorry. I love trains um, on podcasts. I know. It, it happens is. more than uh, you would think. Uh-huh. It really, um, no, I think um, now we have a little bit like uh, as the weekend goes by, I'll kind of think like, oh, that'd be funny to talk yeah. about, or this would be really cute to bring up, or my kids will do something. I'm like, oh, girl, I can't wait to share this. Mm -hmm. Or this weekend, um, you know, Sam Hunt had a video that came out, and I needed to discuss the ridiculousness <laughs> of that video. Um, but yeah, so I have a little bit of an idea, but for the most part, I just kind of wing it, and it ends up being pretty funny and we we shoot it first thing as soon as I walk in the door Monday morning and Jack edits all day long to have it ready to be on our Facebook page at 6 p.m. I love it. It reminds me of that's how I work with the podcast. I mean literally I look at everything that my guests send me. You saw the questions I yeah. asked you just kind of yeah. random different questions and then I write down literally like four talking points and maybe we'll yeah. get there. Maybe we'll want, won't. Yeah. Maybe I'll tell you about running into a ditch. Maybe you'll yep. tell me. You know it's just kind of yeah. go with it and I love that because it's like yeah. a conversation. Yeah, it really does feel like, as someone who listens to your podcast, it really does feel like I'm just sitting down with girlfriends and listening to them chat. Oh, like good. my That's girlfriends. What I want. Like, Yay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm giggling with you guys and like, oh, I got to try those, you know, chocolate covered bananas or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Well, just remember you're on the show today. So, yes, I know. I'll, I'll try not to just listen. Yeah, it's okay. So, you told me that you guys have, I want to talk about the, there are two things I want to talk to you about today. Number one, yes. you mentioned a book that changed your life. And yes. I'll just tell you ahead of time that that's one of my favorite books ever. Um, we'll get uh, to that in a second. But I also want to talk to you about you guys are doing Foster to Adopt. And yes, so, let's start with the book, maybe, because that does that kind of go into that? Yeah, for sure. Let's start with the book. Uh, tell me. Yes. Best book you read recently? Um, <laughs> well, I you know, the thing is, I think I read Interrupted, um, gosh, probably over a year ago. 
Um, I had, you know, I, I don't know any like Christian woman with even slight Southern roots that doesn't know who Jen Hatmaker is. Mm -hmm. I, like if they do, they're an alien. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, so I, I knew of her. I never read anything of hers before. I think I just like followed her on social. And then I thought, well, I need to, I need to see what this is all about. Like I'm constantly reading about vampires falling in love. Like I should probably, you know, <laughs> read, read something. Nothing That's wrong with that, by the way. Yes. Um, so I, I don't know why, I mean, surely, cause God was directing me there, but that was just the one I happened to pick up mm -hmm. and I ordered it and I devoured it. And I've never in my life saved my Bible, like underlined things in a book and made notes about it. And my husband does not read. And for days I was like, you have, you have to read this book. You have to, have to, have to. Um, and he ended up getting it on audio cause he still doesn't want to read, but gotcha. he listened mm -hmm. to it right away. And um, it, I know, you know, my family is from Oklahoma. We're big, um, over the top and dramatic, but I, I really don't say this lightly that it changed my life. That's amazing. Um, it was so incredible and it was so what we needed at that time. Um, we, you know, Dave and I live a really blessed existence. Mm -hmm. He's a, um, an executive in the film industry and, um, we were really big. I mean, I think this is probably, um, something to say about the city we live in, but like, we wrote a lot of checks mm -hmm. to charities, but we definitely um, didn't do anything that got our hands dirty, didn't do anything that um, made our life, that was inconvenient for us or hard. Um, we say now we sort of built walls around our house and mm. uh, made sure our kids were safe and protected. And just reading that book was so eye-opening for me. I had, um, it all sort of was this perfect storm of, I think I told you this in my notes, that I had, my prayer had been, Break my heart from what breaks yours. Mm -hmm. um, that that line from Hosanna, I kept that kept just running in my head, and I kept having that prayer, like Lord, just break my heart. Let me see what I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. And then I found that book, and um, just the idea that I feel like we get so wrapped up, just all of us, everybody gets so wrapped up in all of these things when it comes to our faith, and we forget sort of the core tenet. We forget love thy neighbor. We mm -hmm. forget take care of the orphans and the widows and the oppressed. We forget that because um, it's a lot easier to get fired up about the color of a cup at Starbucks. Mm. than well, it Let's is not to even get started about that. I mean, oh, my gosh. I mean, then to really right. like and get your hands dirty. So um, it just it just completely changed our perspective and was a it was is a gift in our life. I literally bought the book for everybody this Christmas. I think about twenty five copies, mm -hmm. um, and just gave it to everyone and <laughs> cross my fingers that they read it and yeah. that it has such a profound effect on them. Um, but as I was reading that and was thinking a lot about you know how we sort of set up our life and I don't know that this is the life that God has called us to live um, we had we were at the tail end of um, we had been going to adopt a daughter um, from Ethiopia mm -hmm. and we had been in the program I want to say two and a half like almost three years mm -hmm. and it were you know you're you're just like slowly moving your way up the list like okay we're yeah. number 26 and now we're number 24 and you're like slowly working your way and then everything just imploded and we started getting news that um, adoptions were slowing to a crawl and then adoption stopped completely and then we kept sort of holding out hope because we really felt like well this was God this is where you kind of asked us to to be and um, then it was okay now we think we're looking at maybe four plus years mm -hmm. um, to, to do an adoption from Ethiopia and we had our we were already three years in and yeah. we were thinking Gosh, where our youngest is going to be seven? Like we, I, I, it just that seemed crazy. Um, and so we started thinking maybe we need to look domestically. And our fear, which is so silly now, but our big fear with domestic was we had this. Um, we were terrified that we would adopt a baby and then the biological parents would take her back. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't even know why that got into our head, but we well, thought it gets well, into our head because meat. That's yes, that's a yeah. common media portrayal. Yes. Um, and, and so we went international cause we thought oh, this sounds so ridiculous, but at least then they couldn't come back and get her. Mm -hmm. Um, so we decided to look into domestic and at the time, um, Dave was really, really hard set on, okay, we're going to do private. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, absolutely. He was like, I wanted to control every variable. Like mm -hmm. there will be no health problems. There will be no this, there will be no that. And I just felt this tugging, like this isn't if we're called to adopt it, we're not supposed to go adopt 
like the best, mm -hmm. of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I know exactly that, what you mean. That baby is always going to find a home, but the, oh, there's so many others that aren't. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that's what we're called to do here. And we found this book and it, it so changed our hearts and definitely changed his heart. And so I said, let's like, if we're going to do it, let's look, what is it like in LA County? Um, mm. And LA County is a foster to adopt only. That's the only way you can do it. Oh, I and didn't know that. We didn't either. Do you we know had... Jillian Lauren? No. I think she might be in LA County. I think she lives in LA. But anyhow, they're just, she's been a guest on my show. She's an author. You should get to know her. She's amazing. Uh, cool. I think she lives in LA. Um, but she, they're doing foster care too. Okay, keep going. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. It's and foster okay. to adopt as well. So I didn't yeah. know that. That's interesting. Yeah. So we didn't know when we started the program and then you have to do, it's like eight weeks of classes, like eight hours on a Saturday for eight. It's crazy. And the very first class at the end of eight hours, they make the announcement, oh, by the way, LA County is now foster to adopt only. And Dave and I are like, wait, what? <laughs> like what? Am, what? And we were one of very few people in the class who were actually wanting to adopt, so it didn't affect other people. Um, and we got in the car that day, and I'll be honest, we were pissed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were some words we felt like we felt like they, we were like getting tricked, like they like they had, were holding out yes, on you, and like, like oh, we got you. Yeah, and we have kids, and how's this going to affect our kids if we have to foster a baby? Because mm -hmm. the baby that you're fostering is not necessarily the baby you get to adopt. For sure, there's right. just all of this chaos. And so we were so fired up and thank goodness the car ride home was about an hour long. And in that, in that hour, we talked our way back around from, mm -hmm. okay, if you are going to say that God is calling you to do something, you don't get to not do it because it's hard. Mm -hmm. You can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. You're either being called and you're doing it regardless or you're not. Um, and it just has been a really heavy process. It's been hard because mm -hmm. those eight weeks of classes, which I, I really do appreciate that they make you go through them. Cause first of all, if you can't deal with those classes, you for sure should be yeah. uh, these kids, but it's eight weeks of classes talking about, um, abuse mm -hmm. and sitting in that for so many hours. It just, it was really hard on, I think everyone who went through the classes together. Yeah. Um, but uh, we are, the definition of walking in faith right now. We know that we are actively um, seeking disruption. We know that we are for sure going to get a child who has something, even, you know, God's plan for a baby is that the baby is supposed to stay with its mother. So um, even if you get a newborn right away, you're still removing it from mm -hmm. what it was supposed to, mm -hmm. what would, naturally it should have happened. So there's going to be issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's on the small side, like there's, you know, there's so many greater things that are going to pop up because of the circumstances. Um, and we don't know, like, are we going to get a little girl who's, who's been abused or just, there's so many things that yep. we don't know. Um, and we're just, we're just moving ahead. This is amazing. And I love that you like God used you reading this book that literally interrupted your life. Absolutely. And you went from a very, like, I know Ethiopia international adoptions are hard, but con compared to what you're about to step into, it's a very oh. safe process and a very, totally. like, easy on us as the parents. Totally. Okay? totally. Nothing, nothing's easy or safe for the kids. Yeah. But yeah. as far as for the parents, it's a really, like, cut and dry thing. Yeah. Besides the four-year wait. I mean, I'm, not, I'm yeah. not making light of that. But I'm yes. saying foster care is a completely different yeah. ballgame. Well, I also think what's so interesting now is like, you know, if you wanted to, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Our mm -hmm. whole thing was like, we didn't want involvement of biological parents. Right. And now recognize through foster care that we are for sure going to be interacting with biological parents. 100%. And I think that you couldn't, my understanding in going through these classes is getting to a place of you can't, I think, go into this process of foster care if you don't have as much love and compassion for that parent as you do for that child. Absolutely. Uh, because they are hurting and mm -hmm. they are scared. And for whatever reason they are in this place, um, you, you've got to have compassion and love for them as well. Now, I'm not in it yet. So six months from now, ask me again and maybe I won't be so like. But you loud. know what, Rachel? I think that you're coming into it with this perspective that some people never get. 
Yeah. And so that right there, you're 15 steps in front of other people that come yeah. in with this perspective of like, well, these kids need to be with us because we're better yeah. and okay. I hate these parents and blah, blah, blah. You know, and, yeah. and I think that's a real thing that people have to kind of block. I have so many, we have so many friends around us that are doing foster care and foster to <laughs> adopt. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a big party here the other night and I see my girlfriend out in the yard far away with her little foster daughter and it was like four o'clock and they had, she had a call with their mom, you know, so yeah. there they were. Yeah. Um, and man, I have some stories, but the people that I've watched walk through foster care, they, they know that God's best plan for that kid would be with their parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be the exactly. best plan. And you know what? Yep. My friends all, they weep and they rejoice when a kid goes home because yeah. it is so hard because yeah. I have a friend who her kids going home on Friday Aww. and they've had him for his almost, except for six weeks, he's had him his entire life. Wow. And so they're rejoicing that his family gets to be complete and he gets to go yeah. back with his mom and dad, but there's going to be like sorrow in their house and there's going to be a missing brother. They have two other kids, yeah. you know? So, but to see my friends like sacrificially give that love, it's yeah. one of the greatest things I've been able to walk beside them and do. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, I have said this book a thousand times on here, but it's called The Middle Mom. And Ooh. it's a book that I read about um, foster care years ago. Um, and a woman had just fostered a bunch of kids. And um, anyhow, she said in one of the parts in the book, she said people always ask her, because this is a lot of people's number one thing is like, how could we give a kid back? Mm -hmm. You know, Totally. And I feel like I'm repeating myself because I just told the same book uh, to Corey last week on the show. So I'm going to say it again, but sorry if you already heard it, people that are listening. But she says in there, she says, like, we're adults. And so yes. for us to not foster these kids that need homes because of our emotions is very selfish. Yes. Yes. Um, totally. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said, but that's basically what her gist was like, hey, we're adults. Yeah. So there is, um, when we went to our first orientation, there was this awesome social worker who had been doing it for years and years. And she said the greatest need they had in foster care, the greatest is for someone to take babies, which is like, just breaks my heart and also confuses me. Cause I would think like, I want to hold a baby. Mm -hmm. I, why wouldn't everyone else? And she said, it's because people don't want to grow attached to a baby and then have it removed from wow. them. Mm -hmm. But that means that in LA County, there are so many babies who are being passed around from person to person who do not have a place to go because you're worried about how it's going to hurt you. Wow. And you're making it about you and it should be about the baby. This is crazy that you said that because I had a girlfriend stop by the other day and um, she, they're about to start, they did foster and they ended up adopting their daughter and she told mm -hmm. me they're about to get back into it again. And she told me the exact same thing you just said. Yeah. She said that a social worker here told her that their greatest need is for babies yes. and that they're having to send babies, to, like separate twins and send babies to shelters because they totally. don't have enough people that just want to foster. Yes. Like that was what so she said. Crazy. So they just want to yeah. foster little babies that will probably eventually go back to their parents. Yes. But people aren't willing for that. Yeah, which is so – oh, know, and heart. I've even been like – I don't know that I should say this out loud on something that people are going to listen to. But I even like <laughs> found myself like praying like, God, do you want yeah. us to just foster? Like yeah. I, I'm perfectly content with my family. I don't want any more kids. We're yes. happy with our four. Yes. But God, do you want me to do this? You know, and that's just – that's a scary prayer. And it's a very inconvenient thing to bring yeah. a baby into your house. Well, there's also um, – there's also respite care, which yes. is just like really short periods of time when they just need someone to take. Mm -hmm. Though I do have a girlfriend who has her, you know, three-year-old son is, was respite care and just stayed with him forever. And is <laughs> oh, See, so, that's what God would do for yeah. us. My exactly. son Deacon was in respite care. And so right. I always have said, and that woman was so amazing to us and so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been like, those people are special. I love yeah, what they do. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So Rachel, what are three things that you're loving these days? All right. It was hard to narrow them down for you, but um, I <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know if this is right for the list, but I feel like if Jennifer or Jessica can do, um, what'd she do? Like something from Trader Joe's? I was like, for oh, sure. Okay, she did. She did like uh, popcorn or something. <laughs> yes. Um, well, please tell I, me it's food because you said you like to talk about food. Well, one of them is food for sure, but I'll save it for last because okay. it's least exciting. Um, I <laughs> got a Rifle Paper Company planner for Christmas. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, who's our food editor here, gave me one. I'm a, I'm a huge list maker. Uh -huh. I love a list. I love a spiral-bound notebook. I'm a little crazy about that. So he got me the most beautiful um, planner. And it had like I just didn't even know what I was missing out by not having a planner. I don't know if you Google them; they're so pretty, and they just rifle? make you feel rifle. Oh, do you not know what rifle paper no. is? No, look, oh, I, I need girl. you to tell me. Oh, girl, you educate go, me. 
go Google them right now. Um, it's, it sounds so silly. It's a paper company, but like the most gorgeous floral designs. Like I think she started out just designing like fancy paper that you'd get at, um, Oh, I can't think oh, of the name of it. It has its own little style, I see. Yes. Yeah, very distinct style. And now they do everything. Like, they have journals. They have planners. I want to say they have wallpaper. Like, it's so gorgeous. They have but everything. They have gift they have, wrap. Yep. Yep. Pencils. Yep. Do it. Follow them on Instagram, too. They have a good, they have a good Instagram So you account. got a planner from them. I got a planner. Um, Jonathan got it for me for Christmas, and I'm loving it. Um, and it um, – do you guys are you guys into the giving keys? Have they made yes. their way to Texas? Okay, uh -huh. we joke here that like wait, if you're is that number two? That's number two. Okay, wait, go back to number one because I have a question. You. Okay, yes, ma'am. So mm -hmm. you you're a write down on paper type of person. I am. Oh yes, yeah. I don't. I love technology for uh, for my calendar and things like that, but I like to write it down and cross it off my list. Okay, so for I, notes, but your calendar is online. So my calendar's online. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Google Calendar synced to my phone. Yes. So I know what's going on. Yep. That was my stress for a second because people that use paper no. calendars, I wonder oh, what you do I when you're like yeah. out. No, I don't know what. Yeah, no way. No, I just, this has the calendar in it, but it, I really like it because it breaks down, it gives you a list for each day of the year, mm. which is, yeah, it just, it's just much more beautiful than I'm describing it. But Are I'm you a big the kind fan. of person that writes down something after you've done it to cross it off? One thousand percent. Me too. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I already, yep. <laughs> So I Brush my teeth. Yep. <laughs> Check. Done. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. That's awesome. Okay, number two, giving keys. Giving keys. So we joke that like if you're a Christian in LA, this is your key to heaven. <laughs> like that's how you know. You're like, oh, you're a believer. You've got your key on. Um, I'm wearing one right now. I kid are, you not. I love it. What's your word? Well, it says savor, and I got it uh, uh, when John and book came out. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, my friend Heather. Do you follow Macy Makes My Day? No. Do you know who that is? Oh, girl. Go follow her right now Macy on Instagram. Macy Makes My Macy Day. Macy Makes My Day. Um, Heather Avis, and one of my very best friends, and got her first um, book deal with Zondra Van. I'm totally going to shout her out right now. She's I awesome. I love shout outs. Go for it. Um, but she is, they're so incredible. If you are into adoption, you should follow them. All three kids, of, all of three of their kids are adopted and two of them have special needs and their Instagram account is so much fun and will absolutely make your day and your life and make you happy. All so right. follow so them. I but will be a follower. She also has the saver key. Oh, which okay. Is yes. Um, but yeah, so I got my giving keys probably about nine months ago. I was really struggling with anxiety and I got a key that said breathe and then my um, sister-in-law sent me a second key, which I added to this chain that says still, as in be still and know that I am. Um, and so I wore those forever, and they were so um, special to me. And when I would start to stress out, I would just touch my key and make myself breathe. That sounds a little weird. Um, <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was really helpful to me. And I had stopped wearing it because I didn't need it anymore. But I fully intended to keep it forever because um, it just had special meaning. And then I got a new, you know, like the newsletter or something came out from the Giving Keys that said, um, what are you holding on to that you need to give away? Is, you know, it's a new year. It's time for a new word. And I thought, oh, all right, Lord. Here we um, go. And that same day, I have a lot of a lot of our readers send me emails and, and messages, uh, private messages. One of the readers had sent me a note talking about she was really struggling with um, anxiety. So I was kind of talking her through um, what had helped me, and I thought, oh, this is who I'm supposed to send this necklace to. Mm. Um, so I have it's here on my desk, ready to ship out to her. Of course, she's in Ireland. So was like, oh, of course. <laughs> You couldn't have been in Colorado. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to send her my um, breathe and be still. And then my new um, key that's on its way is create. That's amazing. Um, yeah, because I'm really um, – have you read Big Magic? It's on my list. Oh, girl. I can't – like more than anything, It uh, I can't – talk about it enough it's so 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 good and even I think people hesitate because they think well maybe I'm not a creative person or you know living a creative life why does that apply to me it's just an awesome book about um that we used to do when we were little we did things that we loved like we roller skated we painted we played with clay or whatever and somewhere along the way someone told us we weren't going to be the best at that, so we should just stop doing it. Mm. So you're not going to be the best writer or the best singer or the best photographer, so don't because you only pursue creative things if you're going to do them for a living. And this book is all about, no, you pursue those things because 
you have the God-given ability because they make you feel happy because it um, is inspiring in your life. And so I'm just really loving the idea that um, I feel like for a long time I was really focused on making um, but making to me sounds like work, mm-hmm. like you're making yourself, you know, and I'm really bad about pushing myself too hard and it's never enough. So I like the idea going into 16 that my word is create because to create sounds like something enjoyable. Um, I want to create friendships and I want to create, um, beautiful things and I want to create, um, a better relationship with my husband. I because just think it's there's more a lot than work. Yes. It's not work. It's like, you're finding joy in that. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about my new giving key. Do you do a word every year? Um, it's only my second year, so sure. <laughs> okay, yeah, you do for sure. A lot of um, a lot of people do do that, I'm, and I'm, I don't know if you're seeing that too. Like a lot of bloggers will be like, "My word this year is this." Yes. Um, so I thought, well, shoot, I need a new word. I need a word. Uh, yeah, so I'm getting it. I've never done that. I- I'll be honest with you. The task of picking something, for yeah, that labels a year, it makes my armpit start sweating. I think it's more, uh, you know, to say it's a whole year is, yeah, that's that's a lot of work. But I think it's more like, what do I need in this season? Yeah. I am really big. Um, before the Giving Keys, I even knew they existed, um, I would have little gold bracelets. I wear gold bracelets on my left wrist all the time. And I would have them inscribed with words or sayings I needed in this season. I just go on Etsy and, like, pay 30 bucks yeah. and have And I never take them off. Um, So one of my bracelets is where my trust is without borders. Mm -hmm. Um, And another one is show up. Like I I told you, I want to show up for people and stop being so focused on myself. Um, So, um, yeah, I love the idea of a word that you need in this season. And um, just a reminder of the – of you know, what it is that you want to do and the kind of person that you want to be. I think the whole idea of it is really inspiring and I, I love the idea of it. I think it um, makes, it just makes me nervous and it makes me feel like it's a lot of like looking deep down inside. Mm. Not that I'm opposed to that at all. <laughs> um, and a hundred percent not opposed to that, but it just makes me feel like stress. It makes me nervous mm. more than it gives me comfort. I know. I don't know why I've, I see people do that and I, I think it's amazing and I and I wish I could. It makes yeah. me really nervous. That's so interesting. You should dig deeper on that. You should unpack that. But it makes me nervous to dig deeper on that. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that's so telling when someone's like, Oh, I really no, I really do want to go to therapy, but I'm afraid of I'm what, afraid of what might okay. happen. Yeah, totally. I think that's even the first time I've ever verbalized why I don't do that and what it makes me feel. Yeah. So I'll keep thinking on that. It's interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, giving keys, love them. What's your third yes. thing? Third is a soup at Whole Foods. <laughs> oh. I was like, I'm going to be totally honest. I am obsessed with this soup. And I am so – they have a lemon chicken artichoke soup mm. that I eat every day for lunch. And I was so obsessed that I made our table editor go there, eat it until he could clearly identify how to make it. No, we put the recipe on the site yesterday. We totally figured it out. I and want that job. Go soup. eat this until you figure out what's in it. <laughs> I do him all the time. I'm like, we have to figure out how to make this soup. And people went nuts for it. It went up like yesterday or the day before. And I was like, I am not the only one who loves this chicken artichoke soup. So if you need that recipe, we totally figured it out for you. And so you've tasted both. And would you say you had, you nailed it? Oh, we totally nailed it. I would dare say that ours is even better. There you go. Uh, Cheap uh, sight is better. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Um, okay. So that soup, I have, n- I, I'm going to, I have never eaten soup from Whole Foods. What are you saying? Because when I go, like the option would be like the big salad bar options. That's true, yeah. And I love all of those options. Like I'll make a salad, but it it turns very unhealthy. It's not a healthy salad. It's like how much cheese can I put on one salad? Because I have 17 kinds, I'm going to put them all on. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But I've never opened the soup containers. Oh, man, they're they're delicious. You should absolutely give them a go. Um… The other thing that Whole Foods has is if you – they have all their soups um, in the cold section so that oh. you can buy a pint or they sell these like – this sounds so weird, like almost like a giant Ziploc bag of them. Mm-hmm. Um, when my assistant – my assistant had a baby five months ago, I would just buy a bunch of those and bring them to her house <laughs> so she could freeze them or like keep that. them in the fridge. Yeah, they're, those are great. Soup I need in a bag. I keep that in mind because when I sign up for meal calendars – Yes. A, I only sign up if it's like your first baby. Like I can't yes, bring yeah. meals to a family yes. of five. Like yes, I just like can't yours. do it. I can't even feed my family of six. I, like I can't feed yours. That's 
fair. It's so totally if it's fair. your first baby, I'll bring your meal. And it's usually one of those bags to go from Whole Foods. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a great thing. It's a who great doesn't thing. want that? And yep. I'll throw in like if they like like a bottle of wine or yeah. some dessert or <laughs> something. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Whole Foods, all the things. Okay. I love that. And I love Whole Foods. Um, <laughs> we sometimes take the kids. It's fun to take the kids to eat there because they just get to pick whatever, whatever they want. Yeah. And you feel like you're sort of healthy. You're like, that's organic. So kind it must of, be right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. You told me that you love to read. I do. Oh, yeah. Tell me all but, your reading. And first of all, do you read multiple books at the same time or are you a yeah. one book person? The only time that I would maybe mix it up is sometimes I really like reading nonfiction in the morning, like waking up before everybody else, having my coffee and reading nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And then at night, I want to read mindless vampire book. You're the second yeah. person that I have heard say that. And I, yeah. in the past, not ever in my life, in like the past two weeks, I was listening to another podcast and I wish I could remember who it was. And they said the exact same thing. They yeah, said, I like to read nonfiction in the morning. Yeah. So what so, time do you get up? Um, I you well, it totally depends. Um, if I'm if I'm gonna read or if I'm gonna write, because a lot of times if I'm working on a manuscript, I will wake up at four thirty or five. No way. It's, yeah, because it's the only time I'm really conscious of. Um, I work full time and probably more than full time because it's my company. Mm -hmm. um, so then to write, I have to squeeze in. I don't want to steal from family time. Mm -hmm. So then I've got to find a space that's not doing that. So that ends up looking like really early in the morning. So then um, I, you must be like a responsible grown up that goes to bed at a decent hour. I love going to bed. Like in my perfect world, I'm asleep at nine. That is Shut delicious. up. Are you serious? Oh, delicious. Oh, the sleep. Is your husband you the same? Because sometimes, no. yeah, no. that's what I thought. I wish he was. It would be so great for him. I like will put on an eye mask and just <laughs> go to sleep next to him while he's like on his computer. Um, but yeah, I love, I don't always nail it, but I really love to, like, I love sleep. Oh, that's, well, so then good. that's good because that contributes to you being able to get up at 4.30 or 5. Exactly. But most of the time, if I'm not writing, I'm probably up at 6, 6.30. And then I'll have about half an hour to have a cup of coffee, um, before and like read before I've got to chase kids and to getting dressed. Yeah. And then what time do you get to the office? Uh, nine. Okay, that's great. Because I was like, yeah. when do you get ready and do your hair and stuff? Yeah, I um, usually nine, maybe a little bit after. Some days I we have uh, the babies in preschool two days a week, so I'll go drop him off in the morning, and then I'll get it at nine thirty. I used to be really like part of the reason I had those necklaces was I was so crazy about I got to be the first one here and the last one to leave, uh -huh. and then I recognized how detrimental that was. I had a really um, I had a great year of understanding really understanding the gospel, that you are loved and um, worthy without doing anything, mm -hmm. that you don't have to, I think it's Brene Brown who, is, who talks about hustling for your worth. Mm -hmm. um, I have a really bad habit of that. So um, I'm recognizing that I don't, I don't have to hustle. It'll all be okay. Mm -hmm. It'll still be here if I get in at nine instead of at, you know, 745. So um, yeah, so I try and then I, I leave here like 445. So I'm home by five o'clock. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And so then you have the yeah. family time and then you can still get yes. in bed. Yes. And then I'm your grandma in bed hour. as soon as possible. <laughs> um, I mean, the joke is for real, I'm in pajamas, you know, 10 minutes after I get home. I want soft pants on immediately. Straight, yeah. Um, and you take, yeah. you take your bra yes. off. Take your bra off yes. as fast as you can. Yes. Get your soft pants on. Um, and then we get like, we all pile into our bed. So I, at some point, we're like, these children are going to be too big for us to pull this off. Uh -huh. But for right now, we just all pile in our bed and we'll watch the boys and our big fans of the Food Network. Yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't watch any TV, but I needed to find something like, hey, let's have mm -hmm. a, let's be calm now. Let's stop, you know, punching each other. Yes. And, and you don't want to watch something. like Curious George for another Yes. Time. Yes. No. I get you. Ugh. So Food Network became our thing. So that's what we typically do is like we're in bed and we're watching Food Network. I was about to ask Pretty you exciting. when you said you went to bed that early. So you're not a big TV watcher then? No, not at all. Okay. Um, I, in fact, that the Food Network shows I watch with the boys are the only thing. And probably, I probably haven't watched TV in three years. And that's not some like monk whatever like oh I don't it's just you don't have time that. and it's not, it must not be a no, filler I for you. I would rather read. Yeah. I would way rather read um than watch tv I, I think like after i had ford um i just 
so many shows, even if they were fake, would freak me out. Like, oh, someone got kidnapped and my I have children and what if they get – I just couldn't handle yeah, it. So I was uh -huh. like, I'm just going to go over here and read about a Scottish <laughs> warrior. There you go. <laughs> so speaking of what are you reading and what or what have you read and you loved? Um, so Big Magic is what I just finished. Yeah. I loved it so much. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, have you listened to her podcast? Sorry. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually think I really love her, but I actually think the book is way better than the podcast. Yeah. Um, I, funny enough, am reading like super cheesy books that I've read before right now because I'm writing a new manuscript. And when you're, at least, I think most authors would say this, when you're writing, you can't read anything that's like the genre you're writing in oh. because you're afraid you're going to rip it off. For sure. So, right. Yeah. So I'm just reading sort of like old random stuff. But um, I could tell most like – I sound so cheesy. I'm like my Aunt Linda all of a sudden. I love a romance. I don't even care. It's my favorite genre ever. Um, and it ha – are you – do you read fiction? Are you nonfiction? Yes. I'm a, yes. I'm, I love fiction most. I feel like yeah. last year I read a lot of nonfiction just because of work and stuff. What, what's your genre? Like what do you like to read? I in? love memoirs. Oh, memoirs. Memoirs okay. are my top favorite. Okay. I need to, um, get to that. Besides that, like with like fiction stuff, um, like I read like The Girl on the Train. Yeah. Uh, Good Girl. You're like, uh, you, yeah, women's fiction. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Fiction, yeah. Um, I did read The have, Martian, though. It's the only sci fi oh, book I've that, ever I read. I only saw the movie. I, the movie was great. I the movie was the great. Yeah. Um, I like top favorites of all time um, Outlander. Do you know what Outlander is? No. Oh, girl. Um, well, it's now a show on some, like, Stars or HBO or something. Okay. Like that. But I can't even know that that exists. I mean, I – this book is, like, 20 years old. It's sold a gajillion copies. I love it so much. I can't – I read all my favorite books over and over. I will never read this more than once because it was so perfect. The first time I read it, I can't touch it again. I don't want to know. I sound like an insane person right no. now. No. I don't – I don't like reading books again. Oh, see, I, I'll read, like, I'll forget and then go, oh, let's revisit this. Yeah, what I just feel like there's here? so many books in the world. Oh, no. I, I feel like it's like watching a movie you've seen 50 <laughs> That's times. true. You're like, oh, it's, yeah, 50 First Dates, let's go. You get new things. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, but Outlander is incredible. Um, and anyone who has also read it, I guarantee is listening to this, like, yep, so good. Okay, I'm um, adding it to my yeah. to read oh, list. Oh, it's so, so good. And please, you know, send me a text or something as you're freaking out. It's, okay. I think it is the most epic love story in literature. I said it there. I totally recognize the cover. Yeah, because it's um, – Is it a it's series? This, it's, a, it's a series, but I also – I'm going to get super hardcore here. I don't think you read past the second book. I think after the second book – in fact, I think you could just read the first book. And, and how many books are there? I think there's like 12. She oh, just keeps, gracious. It's that thing. And they're all like 1,000 pages. So bless her heart. She bless just printing her money. Heart. But I don't – I can't get on board with that. Okay. Um, okay. The first book is incredible. Um <laughs> my second favorite book ever is called Discovery of Witches. I don't even know. I'm sure there are like conservative Christians listening to this who are like, oh no. Um, but there, it basically the idea was um, if vampires and witches were real, what would they do for a living? Okay, so that this is a trilogy as well? It's a trilogy. Okay, but again, but again, first book is okay. really all. Second book's pretty good. Third book, I can't even talk about. I can't go there. Because you really. hated it or loved it? really upset me. Ooh, I can't. Okay. Yeah. I, I see. I get too emotional. This is if I ever meet these authors in real life, it, I'll embarrass everybody. It's because you're it's, like, I need to talk to you about this third book right oh, now. No, I'll just like, probably start crying. Oh, because you loved uh, it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love, I've read Discovery of Witches probably six times. Oh my word. From, from a perspective of loving the book, but also like, I wish I could write like this. Oh yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. If you like women's fiction, let me give you one that doesn't involve a vampire. Okay. Um, um, wait for it. Rules of Civility. Did you see that? It was like New York Times bestseller a couple years ago. Um, this guy, I, I don't know. I'm always obsessed with the author's backstory. This guy's like a older, like, I don't know, late 50s, like an investment banker in New York. There is no reason on this planet. It's his first book. It is the most beautiful. Amor or like, something? Is that his name? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I have no idea why he can write like this, and I, you're, it's the kind of thing where I know this sounds dramatic, but like I would be reading it and I would have to stop and just sit with the sentence. Like that is the most beautiful description wow. I've 
It's gorgeous. Really, really good. And doesn't involve a vampire. Okay. And isn't like super hardcore. It's not really romance. It's just this great story of of this young woman's life. So okay, I'm probably, adding them all to my yeah. to read list. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you'll judge me for the first two, but for no sure judgment. the judgment. Okay. For sure the third one is good. Okay, so did you did you say you're working on a manuscript? I am. Yeah. So I just um the third fiction book that in the series Smart Girl uh-huh. comes out in weeks and I am writing the new thing. Like what's the new, you know, I really wanted to not write in the series anymore. Um I loved it, but you just sort of get it gets mm-hmm. a little monotonous. Um, so I'm, I'm doing something really new, which super freaks out my literary agent. And, um, but I also think for me, writing is, um, is my passion. It's not my job. Yeah. My job is and I don't, you know, after the success of the series, everyone was like, oh, I want you to do this exact thing, but in a sort of different way. You know, because like you I can't do it anymore. Yeah, like, it, because you know that you can sell a bunch of copies, which is awesome, but this isn't my job. And yeah. so I just want to focus on what is exciting to write and not what, um, what is just going to sell copies. For sure. And that's good for you because it's like your whole, like, creative thing. Exactly. Exactly. It goes right along with my key necklace. Goes right back to your key necklace. <laughs> you just get that necklace on and you'll be ready to go. Yep. Totally. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to link to everything that we talked about. And we talked about a lot of things. Yeah. Well, I, I probably talk too fast. No, this uh, is like, this is what the happy hour is. It's amazing. Absolutely. We talked about a lot of things. It was fun. And everyone needs to go find out, watch your rates talks. Thank you. Yes. If you want the real, like, that's pretty accurate, like, the weirdo that I am. Yes. Uh-huh. Go check out Rachel. And I hear you're coming to Austin soon. I am. I am, and we are for sure hanging out. We are for sure don't. hanging out. Have you been to Odd Duck? No. Oh, girl. Restaurant okay. here in Austin? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I bet my um, husband has. He's, like, oh my foodie. I went there a year ago when I was in for the same event last year and met someone for lunch. Like, lunch should not be one of your top five greatest meals. It's – I don't have the words. If you live in the Austin area, if you're within two hours, you should drive in and go eat there. They do a seasonal menu. They make it – you know, it's like open-air kitchen. They're cooking it in front of you. It's totally Austin. It's, oh, my gosh. It's – yeah, it's super odd and quirky. It's the weirdest um, – menu you've ever seen it's the best food and i don't want you to eat it now because i want you to eat it with me when i come okay well it's a date let's do it let's do it i'm um, so excited yeah, the odd duck. anyone in the austin area go there immediately oh girl so i'm gonna good. have to ask aaron if he's been there and i guarantee you'd be like oh yeah i love that place it's incredible like i we had the weirdest lunch ever we had donuts for dessert oh my gosh the best i still okay. think about it that's how you know it's a good meal when you're still yeah. thinking about it a year later exactly. and you want to go back and eat at the same place when there's a totally. hundred different restaurants to choose from. Yeah. So good. Okay. Amazing. Okay. And I, I, I just cannot stop thinking about Rach Talk. <laughs> what happens? What happened on Rach Talk that was so interesting? It's Which just, one did you see? I know. No, it's not that. I just love the concept and idea and I just want my own. Yeah. Do it. Girl. I want my own Jamie to- Talk. Yeah. Turn on a camera. I do think that what helps it to be funny is that Jack, my video guy, edits edits it in such a way oh, for sure. that A, it's much faster because you see, I just talk forever and then he's got to cut it down for mm-hmm. me. But he also edits it in a way that makes it funny. So if there's some, if you have someone with mad editing skills, that for sure helps. He does, it's hilarious. Okay, well, I have loved having you on the happy hour today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, it was such a joy and I cannot wait to have you on a real happy hour at Odd yes. Duck. Yep. Um, okay, and I'm going to link everything we said, and just, this was so much fun, and now I get to, okay, so today was my kid's first day to ride the bus, and so now I just walk down the street and meet them. Awesome. Don't fall in that ditch. I'm not going to fall in the ditch, <laughs> because I already embarrassed them thoroughly enough this morning, uh, awesome. but I still have on my um, comfy pants from this morning that might be pajamas. Okay, whatever, whatever. You are, you know, built for comfort. I like that. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Okay, <laughs> Rachel, thanks for joining me. Thanks, girl. Guys, I seriously could have talked to Rachel for three more hours. Wasn't she just the best? You can see why I'm so excited for our happy hour live show. Rachel was as lovely as I imagined, and I hope that you enjoyed our talk. As usual, everything we talked about will be up on my website, jamieivy.com. There you can ask questions, you can find links, you can leave comments. Find me on social media as well. I really love Instagram these days. My Instagram account is at jamieivy. It's J-A-M-I-E-I-V-E-Y. 
Guys, today I'm going to ask something of you. I'm going to ask that you share the show with a friend. The happy hour, the way that people find about it is because girlfriends tell them about it. And so I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me if you would just share today's show or share another show that you loved with a girlfriend. Send them a text. Hey, have you listened to the happy hour podcast? I would just really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Today's show is edited by Knox McCoy and the music is from Jason Poe. Next week, my guest is Stephanie Holden, who I've been following on Instagram for a while and was finally able to hear all about her family and her faith journey. You're really going to like this one as well. Guys, enjoy your week. Share the show with a girlfriend and have a happy hour with a friend. Mm-hmm.